Hey everyone, welcome to The Creator Show. I'm super excited to bring on a guest today, a friend, um, someone that um, has been building their business for a while now. And um, as always, I'm, I'm gonna get her to introduce herself here in a second, but I always want you guys to understand that we bring people on who don't just have the flashy stories or have like the success overnight. We wanna bring on people, and uh, this is not a shot at anyone that we bring on, but we wanna bring on people who actually went through tough times to get to where they are today. Because majority of people, I would say probably 99% of people, they just, the journey to quote unquote success or the dream life that they want is not easy. So anyways, we're bringing on a really special guest today. Her name is Courtney Marie, and I'm super excited to have her on. So Courtney, um, I mean, say hi. And basically to start, give like just like the 30 minute description of who you are, what you do, and then we'll dive more into your entrepreneurship story, all those fun little things. Yes, definitely. Um, so what I do now, um, I was a fitness coach, but I recently pivoted. So now I'm a web designer for Kajabi users, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about that. But yeah, that's basically what I do in a nutshell, from fitness coach to web designer for Kajabi users. And now I'm focusing on building a I guess you would say creative agency, yeah. um, which is so crazy to me. But, yeah, <laughs> that is fun. I'm excited to dive into that, and that's and that's that's part of the thing. Like a big thing that we're going to talk about, and I told you this before we jumped on here, is like you learning how to create kind of the the life that you want to create, the the job, the the business, all the different things. And I'm excited to dive into that. But mm -hmm. let's start at the beginning which is what actually caused you, I'm, I'm legitimately curious, why did you want to become an entrepreneur or what was your first taste or like desire of like, I wanna do this? Mm -hmm. I'm actually so glad you asked that. I was, I'm in the middle of rebranding my own website and so with that comes copywriting and your yeah. about page and I actually broke down my timeline and I was blown away. I'm like, wow, this all started in 2014 with network marketing. Okay, like very cool. Which is crazy. A lot of us entrepreneurs get started in network marketing. I did. Get away from it and we're like, ooh, network marketing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so mine started with AdvoCare. I went through college not knowing what I wanted to do. I went to school for advertising and PR. It's like, eh, I don't really like this. Fell in love with fitness. And I'm like, how do I make this my career? Because everyone says, oh, you can't do fitness as a career. That's not a full-time job, <laughs> right? You hear all those things. And so then I found AdvoCare in this community of people. It was all about the community and like, oh my gosh, these people's energy is like contagious. Right. And I wanted a part of that. I wanted a part of their success and their energy. And I'm like, put me in a room with those people and I will do whatever I have to do. So that's kind of what started my journey. Um, first month in network marketing, I made $2,000 and I was like, oh. I'm sold. I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. um, and then kind of just fast forward a year, I moved to California to pursue personal training as a career. Right. And um, I mean, I won't kind of go into all the details, but sure. ended up getting a job at one of the popular gyms in California and learn from amazing mentors. I truly believe your mentor, your mentors help you grow and become the person you are. Like I would not be where I am, who I am today without those mentors, and especially right. with you as a mentor, like they're all part of your growth journey. And it's so important to actually just stop and wow, like I learned so much from that one person, like they had such right. a big impact on my life. Um, so after personal training, I kind of got into this, like, I want to do more. I want to serve more people, but how do I do that? <laughs> I've heard of online coaching. I've heard right. of the influencers. Oh, buy my workout plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> buy my meal plan. Um, and that kind of all started when I went to Shalene Johnson's event, yes. mm -hmm. uh, Marketing Impact Academy. And again, it's the people. I heard story after story. Mm. I made $30,000 from doing this. Right. I made $7,000 this week by teaching people how to draw. And I'm like, <laughs> what? 
yeah. it sounded what too good this? to be true. <laughs> like, what is this online space? Yeah, it's a scam. Um, it's a scam. Yeah, right? A pyramid scheme. <laughs> um, so yeah, that kind of started that and just made me see what was possible. Like, oh, if this person over here with no background, no, like, maybe no degree can do something and be successful, yeah. I can too. And yeah. all I needed was an idea. Yeah. And so got into fitness coaching online. Um, and then, let's see. After that, I decided to try the nine to five world. I don't know why. I don't right. know what got into <laughs> me. So I ended up working at Kajabi, which if you don't know what that is, it's an all-in-one business platform for your website, email marketing, all the things. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I did virtual assistant work. Uh-oh, you're frozen. Oh, all good. Keep going. <laughs> okay. I'm sure you'll cut that out. <laughs> um, after that, I did virtual assistant work um, for a few entrepreneurs in the online space. And right. to this day, I'll kind of just wrap it up by saying my side hustle of virtual assistant work yeah. ended up taking over into now what is web design for Kajabi users. Like right. I had this talent that I was like, oh, that's okay. Like I'll just keep doing this on the side. I love right. fitness. I want to do fitness. I'm meant for fitness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and curious, then, actually, I'm going to oh, stop yeah. you here. Why, why did you push so hard fitness or why did you, was it just like, that's like who you saw the doing the most successful? Is that kind of the clearest path that you saw of getting to mm -hmm. where you want to go? Or was it just like, was that marketed to you harder in when you were on social media? What, what was the reason actually behind that? For me, it was my story. So I've always struggled with my weight. And then once right. I finally found a solution for me, and I love learning about fitness, nutrition, like I'm a nerd about that stuff. Yeah. I was like, okay, if I could do this, I want to help other people. Mm -hmm. And I mean, all of us entrepreneurs, we want to help other people. That's why right. we get into it. I think another thing, why I got in, into entrepreneurship was, I never felt like I fit in, hmm. in high school, in college. Yeah. Like I just, this feeling like, oh, there's like something more. There's gotta be something more. And sometimes I may have a grass is always greener on the other side. But, <laughs> yeah. um, I wanted that community of people. And once I found that in the entrepreneur space, yeah. you just, you have this feeling of, this is where I'm meant to be. This yeah. is what I'm meant to do. Like, you can't explain it. You just know. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a certain type of breed. I think, I mean, as far as like, I mean, entrepreneurs in, in a lot of senses, they, they're, they're exciting people to be around because I think mm -hmm. they're always talking about where they're going and what they're doing. And they're, they're kind of like progress focused people, which mm -hmm. is fun. And then also, I mean, yeah, coming from a, like a nine to five job, I mean, I, I know how it was when I made my first money online. It's slightly like a dopamine hit, a little bit yeah. of thing as far as like understanding that you can make money online. And then also comes the helping people part, right? That's the, mm -hmm. the heart centered entrepreneur where it becomes more of a mission or it becomes um, some kind of uh, maybe like an end goal of what you want to do and help people with. Mm -hmm. So that's very cool. So so you were building your fitness coaching business and you were pushing hard mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so you, you were doing that for a while. Now, what, what eventually made you switch over to the Kajabi work? Um, like even, even more so than just like that started doing better. Like, was it, was it something that you've been feeling for a while? Was it something that kind of just snuck up on you? What was that? Yeah. So I actually went through a phase of depression right. um and i just really like i found myself like how can i help other people if i need to focus on me first right. um i'm all about you need to take care of you in order to take care of other people that is that should be your motto in life yeah. but because my fitness coaching wasn't just here's a meal plan Mm -hmm. It was, okay, what behaviors are we having? Where do these behaviors come from? How do we overcome these behaviors? And I'm going to be honest, that's mm -hmm. exhausting. 
Yeah. It's, it's like a therapist helping someone break past their own limitations when I need to work on my right. own issues. It was heavy. It was, he- yeah, super heavy. And I think God was calling me to kind of be open-minded to this new journey. And it's what I needed in this time, in this transition. Mm-hmm. And once I said, I pushed it off for a while. I remember like working with you, you're like, let's explore this. Like, let's yeah. explore this option. I'm like, no, I'm good. And then I finally, I'm like, I surrendered and it kind of, it just took off. Right. And I think also having something in demand, fitness will always be in demand. Mm-hmm. Everyone needs to take care of their fitness. Yeah. Um, but the biggest part to success in business is one, finding a solution to solve someone's problem. Yeah. And that solution has to be in demand. Yeah. So teaching someone how to draw, that's probably not in demand. You can still right. make money from that, but you're going to have a lot more success if something is in demand. And that was Kajabi for me. Right. Right. Totally. That's, and, and uh, I remember you making that transition. Now I want to, I want to have some, in, in this part of the podcast, I want to have some takeaways because mm-hmm. when you started to push the helping people with Kajabi and building their stuff out, you started to see some bigger months start coming into your business. Mm-hmm. Now I want to go through what were some, let's, let's talk about two, two areas. Let's talk about mindset shifts that needed to take place to continue that growth curve. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about even tactically, or maybe it's just not tactically, maybe it's tangibly like systems or things that you needed to set up. Cause I think a lot of people, they don't want, because they've never had a six figure business or a multiple six figure business. They might not know what it actually looks like. Mm-hmm. So, and you can share anything by the way, like whenever I bring people on here, you don't have to like hide any secrets or whatever. Yeah, um, right. I want to be transparent. Yeah. So let's start with the mindset of like when your business started to grow, what were some things that maybe you were like, Hey, I do need to work on this or this is coming up and I need to, let's start with the mindset. Then we can move to the, the tangible. Yeah. Um, so I'll start off by saying your mindset is something that you're always going to be working on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I go to therapy to work on my mindset because I struggle with um, not feeling good enough. Mm. And that's always going to pop up no matter what. So like once I finally, I noticed like once I finally got to the point where I felt good enough as a coach, right. like I'm a good coach. And yeah. once I, my mindset caught up to that, then I pivoted. It's like, I had to start all over with this mindset catching up to my success. Right. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I think you just have to learn how to go with it, not go with the flow, but you have to, you can't let it hold you back in Mm. a sense. Um, I guess just to give a few examples, uh, empathy was a big one, like having empathy for a different clientele. So now I'm in the service-based business which you are dealing with a lot more customer service than you are fitness. So it's also having compassion, having to learn that and more empathy towards your clients. Right. Um, and then also just the efficiency part of it. Like, okay, how can I, I'm a one on the Enneagram. Yeah. If you know what that is. Yeah. So I'm all about how can I make this better, more simplified and more systematized. Like my mind is always thinking, (laughs) ask Ruben, ask Cassie. Like I'm always asking, how can I make this more simple? (laughs) I like that. We need people like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's also just, okay, now I have new systems in place. Mm -hmm. What do I need to um, implement in order to uh, provide the best quality service for my clients? Right. Then let's, let's move into that a little bit because You've had some really great months where you you had, I mean, I, th- I think you've had a couple months where you did above 12K, 15K-ish months. Mm-hmm. And with building a business at that level, there's <laughs> always things that you're going to have to start to outsource things or start to create more systemized ways of doing stuff, which a lot of people when they're starting the business, they don't think about. So run through a couple of those things just so that people who are maybe at lower income levels understand what it looks like even when they're making, maybe it's a multiple six figure kind of run rate. 
Yeah. Um, and I'll also start by saying like the mindset piece when I hit, what was it? Uh, my first 18 K month, my mindset was, is this real? <laughs> is this happening? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember reaching out to you and you're like, that doesn't change. Yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't. No matter what level you are in business, I'm like, oh, okay, then I got this. Like, it's mm -hmm. fine. So I think also reaching out to your other entrepreneurs and just being transparent with each other because I think we all have this. I hate the whole, oh, authentic, but it's oh, yeah. not authentic. Yeah, it's a buzz. It's a buzzword. Lots of people use authenticity to drive engagement. Exactly. When it should be rather to like, it's they're trying to use it as a, as a metric gainer when they should be yeah. used as like a connection gainer, I think. Yeah. So just be, just be open and honest. Like no one's going to judge you for it. And I have that much more respect for you as a person and a coach by just being honest with me. Yeah. Um, and as far as systems go, I use Kajabi for my entire business. Like I said, my website, my email marketing, uh, my courses, if you have any courses, that's yeah. huge. Um, because one, it's simple. It's all in one. And mm -hmm. it's also simple for your clients. You, your when client. you're thinking of systems, I always think of my clients first. Yeah. How can I make this more simple for them? Yeah. And then it's like, okay, what do I need to do for that? Because it benefits both of you. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that I've implemented is a CRM tool called HoneyBooks. Okay. Yeah. And this is great for your service-based businesses. Um, another one is Dubsado. So it's right. your invoices, your contracts, your communication, your emails. Um, it's just a more, it's more um, customized for the service-based right. businesses. Now I would say if you're a coach, I would just use Kajabi and something like, what is it? Hello sign for your. Hello sign. Yeah. Yeah, for your invoices or for your contracts. Um, right. Yeah, those, those two systems is pretty much all that I use. I will <laughs> That's say perfect. I will venture into a project management tool one day. Yeah. Um, I get so overwhelmed with those. So one day. I will. Yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. And I think that's important to realize because I think a lot of new entrepreneurs think that they have to do a ton of like softwares and tools on the front. And when at the beginning, you know, it can be super simple, but as you do scale up, you do need ways to track things better, right? Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing. The, the, the more you grow your business, the more in-depth you should be tracking stuff. Like, mm -hmm. like it's, I, I, my wife thinks it's hilarious how much we track stuff because I'm the most you the do. <laughs> least organized person in the world. Um, and like, cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a seven on the Enneagram, which is like, all I want is adventure and like a big vision and going after shit and yeah. that kind of stuff. And so, but we've like, I've been like, we've been like basically creating new trackers like every week on different things just to be like, no, we need to know more so that we can, I mean, serve people better for one, have better client results, grow our business faster. And so mm -hmm. I think the biggest things for all you guys listening who are making less than six figures is to get to six figures, it's basically like have simplistic client acquisition systems and just like run with it. Mm -hmm. But then when you hit six figures and you want to go to multiple six figures, whether it's 20K months, 30K months or beyond, you need to have like <laughs> your stuff actually tracked. You actually have to have to like consistent. So anyways. Yeah, um, I, I will touch on that. One thing that I've noticed as I've grown is the more you grow, the more likely people can fall through the cracks. Yeah. Um, so one thing with HoneyBooks is when someone uh, submits an inquiry, they automatically get added to my uh, pipeline. So I can move them from inquiry to follow up. So in my brain, yeah, I'm all about simple. So it's like, I can just go see who do I need to follow up with yeah. versus you have email over here. Instagram over here, Facebook over here. If you have one, let's say contact form, yeah. you push everyone into that contact form 100%. and then you can start to track from there as well. I think yeah. that has helped a lot. Yeah. Especially, I mean, you're right when you get, and you're working with more clients than ever, people can fall through the cracks a lot easier in 
like a lead gen sense and also, I mean, in a, in a customer sense, right? Mm -hmm. And so tracking those things a lot closer, it's going to be really important. And it's basically the bigger business gets, the more you have to focus on the quality because you and I know a lot of people who they grew their businesses really fast, but then the quality of their product just like really slumped mm -hmm. because of it. And yeah. those people, I mean, then they, they work on that for a while, but if you want to, I mean, your reputation is all you have, right? You want to do things right the first time, but yeah. you should try your hardest anyways. Yeah. That's so. why I like the whole start messy. I love that. Yeah. But I also think there's a fine line with that. Um, there's, there's a, a too messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, I think, I think I, one of my mentors always talked about it, how he's like, it's kind of like in Goldilocks, right? He always uses the Goldilocks analogy. Mm -hmm. of there is like the porridge that was too cold and there is the porridge that's too hot and there's just like the right in the middle <laughs> yeah there's some people who are way too perfectionist and should start before they think they should start but then there's people who are like they don't have any like like literally nothing and they like they, they have never coached someone before they don't have a certification they've never like made anything and they want to get making money it's like okay like yeah. let's, let's do some steps so i think there's there's this there's this kind of way that we can do it the right way yeah it's so. like those posts on facebook hey how do i start a business with the least amount of cost or without spending money <laughs> or something like that. yeah yeah there's a lot of people it's like oh, if i don't have to learn a skill pay any money but i can <laughs> make money is that a legit thing then we actually move into no those are scams yeah yeah or yeah anyways so but this is this is helpful i think for a lot of people now what i wanted to do quickly at the here at the end is i wanted to do two things okay. i wanted to number one i wanted to talk through what you actually do and what you offer because i think a lot of our audience people maybe not right now will need what you want maybe in the future maybe some of them will right now want it so i wanted you to kind of go through just telling people what you do and how, how you help people that's the first mm -hmm. thing because i think there could be some people listening that do need this and then number two, well, I'll move into number two after you answer that. Okay. <laughs> um, so I specialize in web design for Kajabi users. So this is your websites, customized websites, um, sales pages, opt-in pages, and then um, twofold, uh, customized services. And then I also have templates. So right. let's say you are more the do-it-yourself kind of person on a budget. Um, perfect option for templates. And then on the other side of it, we offer just Kajabi services. So if you need help with your Kajabi, all that kind of stuff. Um, once you get inside of Kajabi, a lot of people, they just prefer to outsource. I right. outsource um, <laughs> as much as I can. I highly recommend it. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. So yeah, guys, if you are interested, go check out her stuff. Should they contact you on Instagram or Facebook? And if so, what's your username on either? Yeah. Instagram is where I hang out. That's where the cool kids hang out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I know a, you're a Facebook. Oh, no, we're done this podcast. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, uh, my username is at Courtney Marie dot me on Instagram. Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds good. So then the last question is I always like to ask for a tangible takeaway of how does someone who's listening to this, what one takeaway, I know this could be a million, but yeah. what's one tangible action, hack, tip, whatever that allowed you to create the life so far that you've been wanting that someone else can use? That's huge. That's I know. A, that's a loaded question. <laughs> try, but you remember you're Enneagram one. You want to make it simple, right? I know. Um, I guess the biggest, can I give two? You can give two. Okay. <laughs> um, first one is to have an open mind. I think that is so huge in entrepreneurship. We get set on this one thing. Like I'm meant to do this one thing mm -hmm. when we could have this other door that opens a huge opportunity that we didn't even yeah. know. No. Um, so have an open mind and the tangible tip I would say, oh gosh, is to promote your services. I love that. I love that. Promote yeah. and don't be scared to promote it. Yeah, Perfect. The more, the more confident you are, the more that you can promote because otherwise people don't know what you have to offer. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. No, I, that's, it's, it's funny. A lot of people often ask me like it's, it's the simple things that move the needle right 
So mm-hmm. oftentimes people just ask me, and I'll, I'll just say this quickly and then we'll, we'll wrap this up, but they'll say, how do I book more sales calls? And I ask them, how many times do you offer a sales call in a week? And they're like, not enough. That was me. Yeah, it was you. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's basically learning that, yeah, it comes down to the activity as simple and as boring and unsexy as it sounds. It comes down to those things. Yeah, I'll give you two examples. Like I said, I don't want to take up your time, but two examples. When I started promoting my Kajabi service, people were like, oh my gosh, I had no idea you did this. Like, (laughs) you're so good at that, whatever. And then two, when I promoted, when I launched my Kajabi templates, um, yeah, I got one or two sales like in the beginning, but most of the sales came in on the very last day when I was hard promoting like, yeah. guys, you have an hour left. You have like 30 minutes left, whatever. Yeah. Fortune is in the follow up and people do wait till the last minute to buy. They do. <laughs> on any kind of launch, if, if you're watching the video on this, by the way, we're going to be putting these videos on YouTube. And in a launch, it's always people buying right when you launch it and right when it closes. And in between, there's this massive you. Every yeah. single time. Every single and time. I never believed that. I was like, no. <laughs> and, then it, <laughs> and then it happened. Then it happened. So awesome. Well, Courtney, this has been great. Thank you so much for being on. Yes. Um, that, guys, seriously, if you do need help with these things, she is incredible. Go check out I mean, her Instagram, she has a lot of like the different kind of pages that she's made, the different projects that she's worked on. It looks incredible down the road. I definitely think I'll probably be hiring Courtney for something. (laughs) Um, And so, but go follow her. Thank you for being on and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Okay. Bye-bye everyone.